partial fractions, part one. Our goal is to split or break down fractions into simpler forms. So suppose you have a rational expression. You have a polynomial on the numerator, you have another polynomial on the denominator. Your goal is to break down fractions into simpler forms. The very first case is the case that you have a quadratic expression on the denominator. So suppose I ask you to split the following fraction into simpler form. So here you have x minus seven, x plus seven divided by x squared minus x minus six. So this is the case that you have a quadratic expression on the denominator. So we have a quadratic expression on the denominator. Very good. So let us begin. First, write your denominator in factor form. Factor to denominator. You get x plus seven divided by the factorization. You can find two numbers that their multiplication is negative six. Their sum is negative one. Those two numbers are x uh, minus three and positive two. Their multiplication is negative six. Negative three times two is negative six. If you add negative three and two, it's going to be negative one. So the factorization is going to be x minus three times x plus two. Now, you want to split this fraction into the sum of two fractions. Why the sum of two fractions? Because you have a quadratic expression on the denominator. The very first fraction has one of these factors. It can be x minus three or x plus two. So let us copy down one of them, x minus three. And the second one has the second factor, x plus two. What is the numerator? I have no idea. I need to eventually form a system of equations to find those missing values. So for now, let us call these missing numerators, a and b, and then use a system of equations to solve for these two. What are we going to do at this step? We're going to take the common denominator. So now take common denominator. So your very first fraction missing x plus two on its denominator because the common denominator is the multiplication of these two linear expressions. So we have a times x plus two divided by x minus three times x plus two plus the second fraction missing x minus three. So we're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by x minus three. Very good. Now that they have the same denominator, you're going to write down one denominator and add the numerators, x minus three times x plus two. So this guy becomes a times x plus two plus b times x minus three. Again, note that these fractions are the same. There is no difference between x plus seven divided by x minus three times x plus two, and this new fraction with missing values. The denominators are the same. You're going to set the numerators equal to each other. So x plus seven must be equal to a times x plus two plus b times 
x minus 3. Well, not that hard to set up a system of equations. Why is that? Take a look at this. On the left-hand side, you have x plus 7. On the right-hand side, if you distribute a into parentheses, you get ax plus 2a, ax plus 2a. Now, if you distribute b into parentheses, you're going to have bx plus bx minus 3b, bx minus 3b. Well, what are you trying to solve? You're trying to solve a linear equation, am I right? So this is just a linear equation to solve. Linear equation that eventually turns out to be a system of linear equations. Why? Take a look at this. You have x on the left. You have ax plus bx on the right. So let's see. You're going to have x equals to ax plus bx. So far, so good. And also, you have constant. You have 7 equals to 2a minus 3b. So 7 must be equal to 2a minus 3b. Very well. So we end up with a system of linear equations. This guy says, hey, one times x is ax plus b. So one is equal to a plus b. One is a plus. Okay, keep that in mind that you have the first equation and the second equation says hey you have 7 equals to 2a minus 3b well you have different methods solving this system of equations what you can do you can multiply the first line by 3 and get rid of the opposite terms okay, take a look at this this becomes 3 equals to 3a plus 3b. 3B. This is my very first equation that I multiplied by 3. I'm copying down my second equation down here. 7 is 2a minus 3b. Very good. So if you add these two equations, as you can see, you can get rid of the opposite terms. 5a is 10, 5a is equal to 10. So a is 2, a is 2, very good. So I found my a, quickly go back to the partial fraction and write down 2 instead of a. So since a is equal to 2, b becomes negative 1. a is 2, b becomes negative 1. b is negative. So my b becomes, this is the answer that we were looking for. We had a fraction x plus 7 divided by a quadratic expression on the denominator, and we wrote it as partial fractions.